Today I'm going to be playing uh, with my Ancients collection. I haven't had them out in quite a while, um, so it was well time, past time, me getting them out and having a game with them. And I'm going to be using uh, the two of the strongest rules with a few of the new uh, suggested rules changes in some of the latest updates. Um, in particular, the use of the Romans. I'm using um, the Polybian Romans, the Republican Romans here, um, and they've changed slightly the rules for how the uh, the Romans operate, so I'll talk about that more in a few seconds. But basically what we've got is uh, Carthaginians on this side, Romans on that side. Um, they've spent a couple of days facing off against each other, and now they have an open field in front of them, ready to do battle. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the individual units in a moment. So it's been a while since I've played to the strongest, and there's been some updates to the rules. Um, and the way that the Polybian Maniple line exchange system works has been changed slightly. Um, and I quite like the way that they're doing it now. So um, what I'll show you is what I originally had. Originally, my units were based like this. So each uh, Maniple, so the Hastati, the Principe, and the Triari, were mounted on separate bases. But as you can see, that takes up quite a lot of space. Um, but it did mean that I could swap them around when the line exchange took place. Um, and I still wanted to be able to do that. Um, and the, indeed the new uh, version of the rules still uh, talks about being able to swap those lines around. Um, but I decided that these bases were too big, there was too much on them. So I did originally uh, try out using some uh, uh, things underneath the bases so that I could stack them a little bit better. Um, but again, I really didn't like that because it, it's quite tall compared to uh, other units around them and it just, it still didn't look very good. So in the end, what I've ended up going with is I've ended up cutting uh, the units off their bases, cutting all the waste base off. Um, so I've sort of uh, painted at the back so these these are effectively a little base on their, in their own right and then I put them on what is in effect a movement tray. Um, but the point is, is that when I need to, I can swap those maniples around um, on that on that movement tray. Um, and indeed, if I want to, I can still separate the triari so they can go off and fight separately. Um, and what I'll do is uh, uh, I will make some uh, rear parts for the triari. Um, so that they look like a full size base and then I can use them uh, as a separate unit if I choose to do that. But the point is I have the flexibility and I just think these look so much nicer like this. Um, slightly more closer ranks so they don't take up as much space. And in the new rules basically what happens is, is the Quinsunks formation, uh, which means checker, um, it's effectively a new type of unit that he's introduced to the rules and, and it represents the, the famous formation that the Romans used when fighting against uh, Pyrrhus and in the Punic Wars and so on. Um, and, and they used small maniples uh, which enabled them to swap the lines around when soldiers got exhausted. And no one's really quite sure exactly how the Romans managed this. It's possible that they did it because they had slightly wider space in between the soldiers so that at a given order they could um, pull their shields in and basically create lanes for troops to walk between them. There's other theories that you actually literally had separate sort of small units so you could move them between each other. Um, at the end of the day, the exact mechanics of how they exchange the lines um, will probably be debated for years to come. But this particular way of doing it, this, this rule system for being able to swap the lines, achieves the effect if maybe not quite doing it the way that the Romans done it. Who knows? Um, so... On the table, uh, the, the Queen Sunks is represented by uh, uh, a base of Hastati with the Principes behind them and the Triari behind them. And they're basically, they're treated as a single deep unit of foot um, with special rallying properties, which basically means that uh, you can use special rally activations to swap the lines around and give uh, basically a free um, uh, rally uh, attempt to try and remove... Uh, disorder from the unit um, and they can do that twice so they, eventually they can bring the triari forward um, so it makes these units quite formidable so uh, you know uh, being treated as a deep unit 
makes them quite uh, tough anyway and that, that special rally activation uh, is a distinct advantage and in previous games it it's made, can make a difference um, so these are quite tough formations to overcome and they look it as well you know raid a raid like this you know um, six ranks deep they look really quite formidable compared to a regular sized unit so that's the uh, Roman uh, Quingsunks formation uh, that will be featuring. Oh, it's the first time I've used this version of the rules. There's been different versions of the, the line exchange system that I've tried out over the years. This is the first time I've tried this. Um, I'm well behind the curve. This has been around for a little while, so our players have been playing this already. But this is the first time I've played to the strongest in probably a year. Um, so this is my first go at uh, trying out this new rule system. So let's see how it goes in the actual game. So for the Romans, what I've gone for is uh, three of the, the Quinsux units in the, muni in the middle. Uh, uh, we've flanked on either side by some Italian allied infantry. And that uh, forms uh, one command with some Velites. Instead of putting them out the front, I've put them on the flank because uh, the on the other side of the table, you've got the Pun Punic, um, the Numidian light cavalry. Um, so that the Velites are going to try and see them off. And then on the very end of the line here is a separate command are some uh, Roman cavalry. So you've got some Equites Equite Extraordinary and some Equites Romani. Um, so, you know, reasonably good quality um, with their own general uh, on the flank. Um, and one of the things about the Romans is they've got a lot of uh, javelins and pylums between them, so they've got a lot of these ammo chits behind the bases, a lot more than the equivalent uh, Carthaginian forces, which we'll look at next. So the Carthaginians have some uh, uh, Punic cavalry, uh, a veteran unit there, um, with a hero, so that's quite um, strong, and with their own uh, general attached. Um, the, unlike the Romans, the, the Carthaginians are divided themselves into three commands, which might make them slightly more tactically viable, because if you roll a one, you can find that your command uh, stops moving and doing anything before you've had a chance. Uh, so having an extra general does give an extra advantage. And of course, generals allow you to, uh, different levels of generals allow you to re-roll acti rally activations and, and activation rolls and so on. So... Um, uh, the extra general might well make a difference for the Carthaginians. Um, in the centre, uh, loads of African spearmen, um, again commanded by their own general and with a hero over here. Two veteran units here, so they've obviously weighted this end of the battlefield. And then right at the far end, you've got some of the famous Numidian uh, light cavalry, those javelin armed uh, raiders. So they're, they're basically going to try and uh, see off the uh, Velites on the other side of the table to see if they can get round behind the Romans. So as you may already have noticed, I'm using dice rather than cards for uh, determining the activation for this game. The normal rules say uh, use a, a set of cards. You take out all the, the, the picture cards and what you're left is a set of 1 to 10s. You use four, four packs so that you basically get uh, random numbers between 1 and 10. All I've done is I've gone and swapped it for some 10-sided dice. Um, now, a regular 10-sided dice would start uh, usually has a 0 on it. In this case, it starts on 1 and ends on a 10. These are dice that I got from... Uh, Ian miniatures um, so I'll be using dice rather than cards but in effect it works exactly the same way you're basically generating a random number between 1 and 10 so the game starts by activating a command and as I've already said the Carthaginians are divided into three so this is one command the infantry is another command and down the end uh, the Punic uh, the, the, the Numidian light cavalry is another command so I'm going to activate the, the horse first, the, the Punic Cavalry first, um, and I'm going to start with the uh, the regular one, um, and I'm going to roll there. So I've rolled a nine, which is a very high number, but it means that it it can move. Now, I, I basically needed to roll two plus. It, you want to try and roll low so that you can reactivate a unit by beating the previous roll. But in this case, I'm going to move this unit forward two, so slightly out of the the picture there. Um, move the tokens with it and keep that number with it so I know let's move the dice back so you can see um, there's my unit there's the dice that it rolled and I know what it what I rolled the other uh, Punic Cavalry again roll for that that rolls a seven so also fairly high really um, 
So now it's the turn of the Carthaginian infantry and I want to get them into combat as quickly as possible. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do something called a march move and it basically means that they can move slightly faster because they're not directly threatened by the enemy. So this will be my activation for all of these infantry and I've rolled a 7. So I'm going to put that 7 behind the units and I can move them forward 1 but because they're away from the enemy I'm going to move them forward 2. So they've surged forward and I'll keep that number behind it. Now I could change the angle slightly I could now decide to move some of these units again if I chose to say for instance I wanted to reactivate this unit to move forward another one I would have to beat that seven um, by at least one so uh, basically I would need to roll an eight or above in order for it to do a simple maneuver um, or to beat it by another two if I wanted to do a, a more complicated maneuver but at the moment I'm quite happy with where they are um, what I might try and do is I might try to move them forward one more square um, by seeing if I can beat that seven. Nope, I get a six. So that's the end of that command's activation. I'm not interested in trying to uh, move my general to uh, re-roll that activation roll. I'm quite happy actually where they are. They've moved forward and they're goading the Romans forward. So now it's the turn of my Numidian uh, light cavalry. And because they're in the same box, again, I can move them together on, on one activation roll, uh, which I'm going to do. And then if I roll low enough, I might try and move them again, but then I'll move them separately. So the activation roll for that unit is a two, which is great because I just wanted to move them straight forward. That's all they needed. And they move two squares um, because they are cavalry. So they're basically in the same box. And now what I want to do move my camera angle slightly now what I want to do I'm going to move that two to there so you can see what I had rolled I now need to beat that by uh, at least a plus one so in other words I need to roll a three or more if I want to do a simple move so this front unit needs to roll a three or more to do a simple move so in other words it's going to go straight forward two again so again I'll roll that I rolled a 10, right, well that's the end of that move for him. He moves forward two and ends up there. And what I'll do is I'll put that dice behind him because that's his new highest activation roll. This unit also gets to roll a separate activation. Again, it needs to beat that two. So, but I want to do a difficult activation this time, which basically means I need to beat the previous roll by at least two. So in other words, I'm going to need to roll a four or more for that unit to be able to do what I want it to do. And what I want it to do is to move forward. So it's, it's actually, it's move it. So it's, it's in that box. I want it to move diagonally to broaden their, the front so that they can match up with the uh, Velites over here. Um, so I need to roll a four or more. So I roll it here. Oh, I rolled a two. Now what I'm going to do is I can move my general um, back let's have a look it's a uh, an attached general I have a move I can move him back to here and re-roll that roll 10 that time so that unit can now move diagonally and then it moves forward one and now the general is with that unit and I will move that's their rolls. It's now the Romans turn and the Valites have decided they're not going to move forward just yet. If they move forward, they put themselves in a position where the Punic, uh, where the Numidian light cavalry can move and shoot at them. And these will only take one hit and then they're removed. So they want to make sure that they stay just slightly out of range so that when it's their turn, if the Numidians have moved forward again, they can move up and throw their javelins first because again the light cavalry will only take one hit and then be removed so obviously they're both fairly weak units and they're reliant on their ability to uh, stay out of melee in effect so they can use their javelins so for the time being they're not going to move they're going to stay where they are they know they've got a fairly good position um, and they're going to wait and see what the numidians are going to do so 
here we have the uh, egg whites and they are going to move forward so that they can face off against the Punic Cavalry. Um, so again, uh, I am going to move. I'm going to spread them out straight away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll for these separately. So what I want is the uh, the Equites Extraordinaire are going to try and do a sideways formation and move to there. So they need to roll a three or more because it's a difficult activation. And they rolled a ten. So they basically move diagonally and move forward one to there. And their general goes with them and their totems. Now because they've rolled a ten, they're not going to get to do anything else. But that's that's fine. They're in the position where I wanted them. And then the following, the other unit, that's just going to do a simple activation. So it's in that box. Right. I'm going to roll for the activation, please. It's a simple activation, so I just need to roll two or more. I roll a three. So I bring it up to there. Now I could choose to reactivate that unit. Um, but I'm not sure I want to. Again, I, I want to keep the line together for the time being. Um, if they did move forward, they wouldn't be able to do anything. Um, and then it might put that particular unit at risk because it could get attacked by two two enemy units. So I'm going to keep these two together. So I'm happy that they've moved as much as I want them to. So that's that command's go because they're a separate command. So they're going, they're going to want to move forward, but what they're not going to be able to do is they're not going to be able to do a march move because if they did a march move and took them to there, they could potentially be hit um, by my light uh like cavalry so they can't do a march move so it's just going to be a regular move and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the three quinsunks units as one with one activation roll and they roll an eight so they basically move forward uh, one square so to there to there to there oh, put them back in the right formation with the triari at the back. And then the on either flank you've got some allied uh, infantry, uh, Italian allied infantry. So I'm going to roll for them. So a seven for that one. Again, can only move forward one. And then on the other side, this, this unit. That was a four so that can move forward and it's going to as far as it can go because it's actually got uh, cavalry in front of it so that's as far as it's going to go so the Carthaginians move to forward as much as they can the cavalry have moved forward although they've not been able to do anything else they've rolled particularly high but they've decided they want to keep the uh, Roman cavalry in their position so they've at least move forward even though they haven't been able to throw any javelins so they will probably take a, a, an attack from the javelins of the Romans next turn. Um, over on the other flank, the Numidian Light Cavalry's moved forward. One of the cavalry units was able to move right up to the Velites, throw some javelins and destroy one of the Velite units. Um, so that, there's only one left there. And then the retreat. So the Romans have moved forward. Um, on the flank, the Punic Cavalry lobbed all of their javelins, sorry, the, the Roman Equites, through all of their javelins at the Punic Cavalry with absolutely zero effect. None of those javelins hit home, so no saves were required. Um, so they have now run out of ammo um, and will be trying to melee in future. Meanwhile, the, the, the Quintox, the Roman formations in the centre, move forward. Um, if some javelins were thrown where contact was made or where they got close to the enemy. Uh, with no effect there. The Italian Allied Infantry here were able to move forward for a javelin and the African Spearmen facing them failed their save so they've taken um, a, a point of disorder. Those regular sized units can take two so that unit is now vulnerable. Over on the flank um, the uh, javelin men, the Velite, um, threw their javelins from the, the wood they activated and rolled high enough to throw a javelin on target for a change and unfortunately the uh, Numidian Light Cavalry facing them failed their save so I'll just put that red mark down just to remind me that a unit's gone from there um, uh, meanwhile the other unit also threw its javelins um, but it was off target it didn't, so they were wasted so they basically they've used some of their ammunition they're down to one ammunition sheet each um, but the Velites have 
scored a kill uh, on the Namibian Light Cavalry, leaving it down to one unit. Now there's been some significant fighting this turn as the Carthaginians push forward. So over on the flank, um, the slightly damaged, the, the disordered unit fell back and the uh, spare, if you like, Carf uh, African spearman unit that was over here did a diagonal move to move in. Um, he rolled a middle of the roads number five, so I thought, well, I might be able to reactivate him for an actual melee later on, but I wanted to try and do some other things with other units first. Um, and I never did get back to him, but we'll come to that in a second. Um, uh, over here, the African spearmen moved forwards uh, and uh, launched into a melee. Um, this one used its uh, hero to uh, to uh, attack the, the Quintox formation in front of it. Um, but the, the, the Romans rolled a seven and that's what they needed. They needed a seven plus to save. So they saved. Um, uh, they fought back and again, the African spearmen saved. Um, so uh, then this unit attacked, uh, uh, sorry, moved forwards, but because it rolled so high, it wasn't able to do a melee. So it's all it's done is it's got itself into a position now. Um, over here, again, the African spearmen had moved forward, but they rolled quite low, so they were able to reactivate and then attack. And again, the, the Romans managed to save. Um, and then over on the flank, um, the Punic cavalry had a decision. They could try and throw some javelins at the uh, now empty-handed equites, but as we've seen, shooting isn't particularly effective, so they decided they would just try for the melee. So they rolled, they got it, they managed to get a, a roll quite high on the attack roll, so the Romans saved. <laughs> they then fought back, and the Carthaginians saved. Um, so over here, uh, again, the Punic Cavalry rolled nicely low, so they were able to roll uh, for their uh, attack roll. They rolled exactly what they needed, and the Romans saved. Um, they then uh, activated to fight back, but they rolled quite low, so they didn't manage to fight back. So basically, not a lot has happened. There's been a lot of fighting noise and clashing of weapons, um, but no damage has been dealt out this turn. But very exciting nonetheless. So there's been fighting all the way down the line um, and in two crucial locations there's been some changes. So over here on the flank the uh, Equites both just elected to uh, attack. Here the attack uh, failed, the melee failed against the Punic Cavalry and in their retaliatory strike they managed to inflict a point uh, of damage, a point of um, uh, disorder on the Equites Extraordinary, which is uh, serious because that puts them in a very vulnerable position. Um, but uh, the other other Equite unit attacked the Punic Cavalry and was successful, and the counter-attack uh, wasn't. So um, basically it's one all over here. Uh, more crucially, over on the flank, the uh, Velites were able to turn and shoot at the uh, Punic cavalry that was uh, sorry, the Numidian like cavalry that was trying to pass them, and they destroyed them. Uh, managed to hit them with javelins, actually hit something with javelins, and took them out. And because there was nowhere for the general to go, he also went. He was attached to that uh, Numidian like cavalry unit, so he was lost as well. Uh, so the Velites have done their job um, at great cost, but nonetheless they've uh, eliminated that potential flanking risk on that side. Over in the centre, there's been a lot of fighting and a lot of saves. Um, the, this Quintux unit has taken a point of shock and will be doing a special rally activation uh, on its next turn. Um, and uh, that's, that's it. Now it's the Carthaginians' turn again. Um, I suspect we're going to see some more fighting um, and maybe a few rallies, rally attempts going on. Another round of very heavy fighting. Um, with damage dealt on both sides. Over here, the, the Punic Cavalry, just slightly now, um, were able to, they threw both sets of javelins and both lot hit, wiping out the uh, Equites Romani that were here. So I'll take that red marker off, it was just to remind me that that unit was there. Um, so that gives the, the, the Punic Cavalry quite an advantage. They took a point of damage themselves in the process, uh, you know, so they're, they're, they're damaged. Um, uh, but over here, uh, the, the Punic Cavalry 
uh, attempted to throw some javelins. They managed to do some damage to the, the, the or the, the, the Equites Extraordinary already had some damage, um, but they weren't able to press that advantage. And in the end, they rolled so high that they couldn't continue their attack. So, uh, you know, the, the, the Punic Cavalry have the advantage, certainly, um, uh, but it's not all their own way and of course there is an Italian allied infantry unit behind that can uh, come into the fight if necessary. Um, in the centre uh, the Punic attack uh, has, has really pushed home, they've done a lot of damage um, there's now damage on all of the Quintucks, uh, Quins Quinsunks um, uh, units um, but of course now it's the Romans turn and they will get this special rally activation um, they have to pass us a, a rally save but they could take some of that damage off and in the process they will move their better troops to the front of those formations so thankfully because they're deep they take three hits because this unit took two hits during the last game and failed its saves um, so uh, you know, it, it's clinging on and it's got an opportunity now to uh, save basically um but the african spearmen also took some uh, some fighting back in the in the uh, counter fighting uh, the, the the when the romans got to fight back they were able to deal some damage so um and of course these are just standard size units and only take two hits so that makes uh, potential points of weakness for the carthaginians there the romans attempt to do their special rally activation to bring their principe forward and both these units managed to foul that rally activation. Well, they've, they've succeeded in the activation, but not in the actual rally save, which means they're not able to swap the ranks and remove uh, a point of shock, which could be dangerous, especially dangerous for this one, which is already down two. This unit was able to uh, make its activation and its rally save and has now swapped its uh, Principe into the front rank and taking a unit of shock off, um, but that is that is all so far. Um, and they'd all rolled high enough that they weren't able to do anything else really. So they just spent the turn trying to reorganise themselves rather than being able to fight back against the Carthaginians. So we've had several turns of uh, melee. I didn't want to do every single dice roll, so I, I uh, for the camera. So, uh, but I've gone through a couple of turns of. Uh, of melee with both sides having a, quite a tussle and a lot of, a lot of uh, damage done to both sides but the Romans have had uh, less success with their line exchange than they would have liked they have eventually managed to get the Principe towards the front um, in the uh, uh, Synconx formation um, but uh, they've still taken quite a lot of damage there um, so this the turn that's just gone the Romans basically stopped trying to get into melee and just lobbed as many javelins into the enemy as they could um, because of course the advantage of uh, throwing uh, a missile weapon is the enemy doesn't get to fight back on that turn so you basically get a chance to damage the enemy without risking getting hurt in a, in a melee um, and, and those units are quite heavily damaged. Um, the end result has been a little bit mixed, the, the, the Carthaginians have lost a unit but so far the Romans haven't been able to really take advantage of that um, so we'll see what happens next. It's worth mentioning as well at this stage that in terms of victory, right, they're the uh, units of the Carthaginian units that have been destroyed which means that there's a uh, four victory medals that they've gained from the Romans but they're of their own six that they started with they're down to just one whereas over on the Roman side uh, there's the units that uh, will have been lost so far um, and they've still uh, they've managed to gain six um, uh, victory medals from the Carthaginians but still have four of their own so they're quite far from breaking at the moment so actually the advantage is definitely with the Romans at this stage of the game Carthaginians manage to get round the flank. They see off another Velita unit and get round the flank of the Romans. And meanwhile, the other African Spearman units manage to pull back and a couple of rally saves and reorganise themselves, moving over to fill the gap that had been formed. Um, they're basically re-preparing themselves for another phase of the battle. Uh, again, the Punic Cavalry have moved back and have used some of their activations to try and replenish some of their ammunition 
um, from reserves. So they've basically taken a pause in the battle, um, pulled back and pre are preparing for a new attack. The Romans obviously haven't had that advantage. But they could choose to um, continue to move forward or they could spend a turn trying to do some rallies and take some damage off of their troops. But um, both sides have taken a bit of a mauling but still the advantage is with the Romans at the moment in terms of victory medals. The Romans have made a desperate attempt to try and break the Carthaginians. They know the Carthaginian army is close to being broken. Um, so they've uh, tried to uh, charge in and uh, try and push that, but they've just not been able to succeed. They've tried to uh, get into a melee only for the Carthaginians to save and vice versa. So, however... Uh, over here, um, the the extraordinary, the, the equites extraordinary, um, charged up, were unable to uh, do any damage, but then suffered from javelins and uh, melee and were destroyed. And the cavalry that destroyed them, the Punic cavalry here, has managed to turn as well. So now this Allied uh, infantry unit has got a flank attack on it, perhaps um, in the next turn. Um, the and, and again on the other flank with the Velites gone the other African spearman unit has been able to turn and the allied uh, uh, Italian allied infantry there have only managed to turn to face them and haven't wanted to initiate combat because there's a very real chance they could be destroyed because they've, they've already got one uh, casual uh, one uh, uh, disorder marker on them um, so this turn could be crucial because it's now the Carthaginians' turn and they really, they only need to do another, destroy one more unit and they've won the game. So we're going to start here. This is the crucial one. This Punic Cavalry has got two, can, as can attack the Allied Infantry and because it's a, uh, a flank attack, they basically get two attack rolls and the Allied Infantry don't get to fight back like they do with frontal charges. So I just need to activate that cavalry unit, a six, so they get to be activated and they will get two attack rolls. I'll roll them both together. One is a hit. So the allied infantry need to make a save over here of seven plus. They roll a nine, so they save. So this unit is going to attack. It's a frontal chart attack. Uh, so the uh, Allied Infantry will uh, get a bonus, but nonetheless. Um, so they roll a 9. They can attack from the front. They do a 5. That's not enough. Um, so the Allied Infantry will get a uh, attack back. They roll a 1. So no, they're not going to do anything. Um, now I've got nothing to lose because this is a separate... Uh, the, the Punic Cavalry is a command in its own right, so I might as well try and activate that Punic Cavalry again. All I need to do is roll a 7 or more, and I get a 6, the same as before. So there was a moment there when the game could have been over. It's not happened. Um, so I'm now going to go to the other end of the battlefield, because again, there's another crucial point there. So this uh, African Spearman group, let's go to the other end of the table... This African Spearman group um, is going to attack this, and if it can do one, if it can uh, uh, damage it, then that will be it. It'll, the, attack, the Romans will have lost another unit, and that will be enough to break them. So we need a uh, activation roll. Uh, actually, that oh, it's rolled onto a three. How about that? Um, so they're activated, and they're going to attack. They need a six or more. Yes. I'll move that dice back there, that was a three. They've uh, successfully attacked. The Allied infantry need a seven plus to save. And they roll a four, that's it, them destroyed. And that would, let's have a quick look at the chart, the Italian Allied infantry, that would lose the Romans two victory medals, and they've only got one left. And that's the point at which the Romans uh, back off and flee the battlefield. They're now in a position where actually their flank is being turned at both ends. Um, so you've got the Punic Cavalry uh, now surrounding the Allied Infantry on this side, which isn't a good position uh, by, by any stretch of the imagination. And of course on the other side, you've now got an uh, uh, African Spearman unit that is now free to attack 
the, the, the Romans from the side or the rear, um, which gives them a significant advantage. So it's not entirely surprising that this is the point at which the Romans decide enough is enough and leave the battlefield. <laughs> 